Welcome to the Speakers Don't Lie, where we tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth when it comes to being an independent recording artist, all right? I'm your host, West Attack, creator and founder of West Attack Productions, and I'm basically here to empower you as a recording artist to build a full-time music business so you no longer have to work outside of your craft, all right? I did it, and I know that you can do it too. All right. Now, for today's episode of The Speakers Don't Lie, I'm going to bring in a good friend of mine named Nobody G-H-Y. All right. He's super, super dope. All right. He makes amazing, incredible music. All right. And I just cannot wait to get him on so we can just talk all things music and just get right to it. All right. Now, he's a Christian artist. All right. And actually, uh, he's a Christian trap soul artist which i which i really want to have a conversation about because i didn't even know that genre existed i don't know if he invented it or it's something that that is out there that i just never heard of before but whichever the case once i get them on we're definitely going to talk about that because it's it's mind-boggling to me and literally his music represents that exactly and i think he's ready now so let me go ahead and just bring him in Yo! Hey, how what you doing, good, man? <laughs> how you doing? Good, good. How are you? Good. I can't complain, man. I'm living. I'm good. Good. That's what I'm talking about, bro. I was just telling everybody about how I, I think you created your own genre. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was listening to your music. I was listening to your music again all the way over here, and I saw your page. You had Christian Trap Soul. I was like, that's like the perfect explanation to the type of music that you make. And yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, is that an actual genre? Or did you like just create that on your own? <laughs> well, okay, so got to give props to Bryson Tiller. Do you know who Bryson Tiller is? Okay, yes. yes. Okay, so he, he invented Trap Soul. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I don't, I don't know how to explain my sound because you don't, I don't, I'm not really a rapper. Mm -hmm. um based on um the instrumentals that i use yeah, uh, yeah. it's not really boom bap rap or anything like that or yeah. like, you know and there's d difference of sub genres of rap so i was just like you know let's market myself as christian trap soul yeah. you know christian r and b yeah. and then you know gospel rap i um, feel you so. i feel you that, that that's super dope and, and i i get what you're saying especially at this day and age you know Rap and R and B kind of mixes all in together, especially nowadays. You know what I'm right. saying? And thank you everyone for joining on. Oh, uh, oh, Felicia just said, "Why am I yelling?" If I'm yelling, turn down your speakers, all right? Because I'm <laughs> high energy all the time. You're just gonna have to deal with it, all right? But I'm definitely glad to have you on, bro. Of course, you know we just spoke recently. You know, um, we've been working together for a little bit now, and it's just super dope. You know, to just talk music, talk independent music business, and also talk to another fellow Christian, you know what I'm saying? So it's right. super, super dope. So first and foremost, I want to ask you, because I haven't asked you yet, where does your stage name come from? The Nobody G-H-Y? Like, I'm dying to know. <laughs> yeah, so so I get this question a lot, because one, a lot of people mispronounce it wrong. They go, you know, Nobody Guy or something like that, right? <laughs> so I've learned, the Lord, has, the Lord has been touching my heart, and I've learned to just be like, no, it's Nobody uh -huh. G-H-Y. You know, because my thing, I'm like, Guy's yeah. not even spelled G H Y. G -H -Y. Guy's spelled G U. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know, let me. I was like, the Lord was like, you know, patience. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so nobody G H Y comes from. Originally, my name was nobody, and okay. what that was, that was just kind of um, <clears throat> God gave me a name that wanted to remind me daily of mm -hmm. who I am without Him. Mm -hmm. right? So without God, I am nobody. <laughs> I love um, that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my producer tag, anything that I, I come in on or I produce, you know, that has that, nobody's going to hurt you. Um, oh, so the going to hurt you is the G-H-Y of nobody G-H-Y. G -H -Y. Okay, yeah. that's so, so dope. And I, I love that. I love that, that, that reminder, that daily reminder, you know what I'm saying, that, that we're nothing without God. That's, that's beautiful. So every time I see your name now, it's going to serve as a reminder for me as well. That's super, super dope. Yes, so let me ask you this. Um, um, tell us, well, for, for those who are just joining in, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, at, at, including where you're from. Yeah. 
So I'm Nobody GHY. I'm 23 years old, coming out of Newport News, Virginia. If you don't know where that is, that's about an hour away from Virginia Beach and about an hour away from Richmond. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm a teacher full-time. I teach 7th okay. grade science. Um, Word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I teach 7th grade science, so middle school okay. teacher. Um, and, I mean, I'm a Christian first and foremost before I'm of an course. artist. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Simple. Yeah, so. yeah that's what's up. All right, so I, I got to ask you about seventh grade, being a seventh grade science teacher. All right, do you guys, like, do the um, the dissections, or, or is that or is that too early? Uh, so you usually do like, dissections in, in high school, so that's okay. a little too early. Um, okay. The most we do would be, like, yeah, nothing like too crazy. Nothing like crazy, like solar system stuff. stuff and like yeah, just like that. that, like you know, learning predators and prey and things right. like that. It's like, like basic life science, you well, know, for basic sure, biology. For sure. That's what's up. And, and do you enjoy it? You enjoy? Oh um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think teaching is definitely a calling. Right. Um, and I've worked hard to get here, because uh, right. you know my degree is not in teaching; it's in music production. Word. Um, so okay. you know as talking to God and, you know, being like, where do I need to be uh, when it comes to, um, you know, providing a life for me and, you know, yeah. my family now. Yeah. Um, he was like, let's go teaching route. And I, I've always, you know, thought, you know, being a teacher was, was uh, what I what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but just never really grasped it until, you know, recently. So, so that's right, yeah. That's what's up. So let me ask you, because you said you got a degree in, in music production. You know, a lot of people, you know, when they're, you know, a lot of independent artists and just a lot of people dealing with music in general, you know, they never really have the mindset to, you know, go get a degree in music production. You know, they kind of just want to just wing it, you know, without school and everything. What made you make that decision to actually go to school for it? Well, ultimately, my parents were like, you're not living in this house if you're not going to get a degree. Oh. So. <laughs> Um, All right, facts. <laughs> no, but I mean, they're right. They're right. So this mm -hmm. day and age, you know, having a degree will put you, you know, a, a set above most people. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to go to school for something that I didn't really enjoy or didn't really care about. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, having a degree in music has put me up, up, you know, an edge above, you know, some other people in the industry. So, right. you know, understanding music theory and going through progressions and knowing things like that. Yeah. Um, anybody can learn it. Yeah. Um, but being taught uh, formally yeah. uh, was a good thing, and I think that was a good choice. Um, and I'm, I'm not in much debt either, so Word. I think the degree was a good choice and a good route for me, yeah. um, you know, to kind of navigate it and be able to do everything myself as well, because I was taught a little bit of music business. Yeah. Um, like I said, music theory, so I know how to make music um, and produce yeah. uh, things like that. I don't do much producing anymore, Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I think it was a good edge. So that's that's why I got the degree. That's what's up. And, and you know what? It's one of those things. It's, it sounds like it's definitely rewarding. You know, you don't just you don't just jump into the industry kind of just not knowing anything. You at least, like you said, is, you know, there's some of the business side, some of the production side. It's almost like they set they set your path for you in a good way. So it's definitely something that I think, you know, a lot of people should consider doing. I, for one, want to actually go back and get my degree in music production someday. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. definitely fulfilling knowing that, you know, I'm certified. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. That I actually got a degree in this. So that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So so basically, none of those questions are the real questions I want to ask you. I was just curious. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Hey, I'm with but, it. For sure. For sure. But all right. So basically, I'm actually like some, some easy questions, you know, about music and everything like that. And then we'll get down to the more nitty gritty music industry type you know um questions so first and foremost um who's are who are your biggest music inspirations oh my biggest music inspirations um well recently i'll, I'll start for the recent like get, okay. get deeper so recently limo blaze have you ever heard of him no limo okay blaze. so limo blaze he's okay. he is phenomenal afrobeat uh okay. artist Okay. Um, I just recently got into Afrobeat because I kind of wanted to branch out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, keep that. That's coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, For the but Lima Blaze has, yeah. Lima Blaze has been a, a huge inspiration, um, mm -hmm. you know, diving into new things. Um, KB is a huge inspiration, too. Oh, of course. Um, of course. I absolutely yeah. love KB. I, I, you know, 
um, someone, a man of that faith, that caliber yeah. of faith, um, yeah. I really look up to. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my pastors, who are my parents, my parents are yeah. my pastors. Um, they don't do music, um, yeah. but, yeah. but they're huge inspirations to me. That's um, they push me forward. Um, and then let's see, uh, music inspirations. There's a lot of them, man. A lot yeah, of them. Yeah, I know um, it's one of those questions. It's like you could literally probably go through right. like a list of like 20 different people, Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we get inspired by a lot of things. But I, but, but I like, you know, I like the people you mentioned. You know, I don't know Limo Blaze, but I'm definitely curious to listen to some of his stuff. Of course, I know KB. You know, he's mm -hmm. like, he's like absolutely epic. You get what I'm saying? And, that's yeah. what I'm saying. and you said your parents. So both of your parents are pastors? Yeah, so I go to my I go to my parents' pastor, a uh, parents' church. Okay, mm -hmm. that's but awesome. I would say lastly is Canton Jones. Oh, um, he was like he was like the first person that I listened to that had to deal with like you know gospel rap. Yeah, and that kind of like pushed me to be like, and I was at like I don't even remember like maybe ten or eleven. Yeah, hearing that and being like, whoa, like yeah. this is groovy. <laughs> I, I actually heard him before I heard the Cray. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you heard Canton before Lucrae. That's right. what's up. That's what's up. Okay, yeah. That's that's usually the first Christian hip hop artist that you hear usually has a strong impact because you don't really hear Christian hip hop on the radio or anything like that. So when right. you hear it for the first time, you're like, Oh my gosh, this actually exists, you know? What right, I'm exactly. A lot of people yeah. are like, Whoa, <laughs> like there's this thing as Christian hip hop, like Christian yeah. rap, what is that? So, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my first was um, the ambassador, you know what I'm saying? He was, yeah, yeah, he I heard about ambassador. First, I heard, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like perfect, you know what I'm saying? Because I love hip hop, but I'm Christian now, so what do I do? You know what right. I'm saying? And I heard him and I was like, oh, this is perfect, you know what I mean? But that's what's up. So let me ask you this. What inspired you to do music in the first place? Um, well, I was actually, so before I went to school for music production, I was actually in school for biology. I wanted okay. to become I wanted to become a doctor. Okay. Um, but midway through my sophomore year, uh, I realized that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. It was taking up most of my time. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to start a family. I knew at some point. So mm -hmm. being a doctor just wasn't really family or it's not a family oriented you know, no, job. Not at all. <laughs> you got um, all you're on call and stuff. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I enjoyed science, but I didn't want to sacrifice my whole entire life to science. Yeah. Um, so I left. Uh, came back and was really struggled, you know, asking God, like, yo, what should I do? What do I want to do? Yeah. Um, and ultimately, oh, ultimately, my dad sat me down. I was like, hey, where's your passion at? Like, where's where's God telling you to be? Where's God mm, telling you to go? What is your heart good. crying out for? That's good. Um, and it was music. I was like, yeah. you know, I hear this music. I always tell myself I can do that too, right? Like, yeah. maybe I can do it better. Um, yeah. And that was kind of a thing. And he was like, well, here are some schools for music. You know, yeah. look into them. So yeah. from then on, man, that was, that's been my purpose. That's yeah. what I, you know, yeah. hear God saying, like, you know, hey, you know, your, your purpose is music. Yeah. Your purpose is, you know, and you can have many purposes, of course, because, you know, teaching, yeah. music, being a father, being a son. Correct. Um, at some point, being a husband. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's how I kind of found my path. Word. That's what's up. So let me actually, because it sounds like, it almost sounds um, very similar to to my history when it comes to finding my purpose in music. Uh, were you were you in a choir, uh, you know, with your church when you were younger or anything like that, or you just at, at one point, like like you said, you know, finding what you really want to go to school for? That's when you were just like music, or did you oh were you always dealing with music? Um, so I actually I had been in band from middle school to high school. Okay, um, so I played the trumpet not very well. Okay. I, play, I played the baritone, play not very well. Yeah. Um, but I was also uh, the drum major for my marching band for two years. Oh, um, so leadership guy. and music was kind of, yeah, so leadership and music was kind of a, a, a thing for me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so so I had been in music most of my life. I know how to read it. I um, yeah. know how to play it. Okay. Um, okay. So, so it was kind of, you know, putting me at a young age. I was never really in the choir. My, my mom is the worship leader at our church. Word. Um, as as well as the pastor. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. I mean, music has been is kind of bred in the family. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it just took me a little while to get to get it's on the bandwagon. It's inherited. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, nah, because the reason I actually because you know I I was listening to you know listening to your music. I'm like, yo, like this boy can sing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like like you know the first thing you think in your mind, okay, he's Christian, he can sing. 
maybe he was in the choir. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's that whole that whole uh, train of thought. But right. it, your your path was a little different from that. You actually were in the choir, but man, you definitely you gotta thank your mom, man. You ain't had <laughs> <laughs> You inherited quite a gift, you know what I'm saying? But th yeah. that's just amazing how God works because it's like, you know you have a passion for music, you know what I'm saying? And you finally decide to step into it, you know what I'm saying? And here, long and behold, you have an amazing singer voice. So it's like, it's just it's just a line, you get what I'm saying? That right. Is, at the moment you find your purpose, everything just starts aligning, and that's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, 100%, man. I totally agree with that. For sure, for sure. So... Let me ask you this. All right, so I know you have a lot of um, a lot of inspiration when it comes to music. What about album? All right, so if you had to pick one album to listen to for the rest of your life, all right, mm -hmm. I mean you're stuck on an island. You you have a boombox that's solar powered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and you could only bring with you one CD. What album would that be? Okay, so remember I told you Limo Blaze? Yes. Okay, God's Favorite Baby, 100%. God's Favorite Baby is the God's name of the Favorite album? Baby. God's Absolutely. Favorite. There are no skips on that album. A word. Man. Oh, man, I got to listen to this right after the show. Yo, yeah. all right. So, uh, so why, why that album? Like, is it, is it, it fits everything? I mean, so it's not rap. Um, mm -hmm. I like to, since I am in that genre, I like to take breaks from it. Yeah. Um, but that the Afrobeat is yeah. just I love it. It clicks in my heart in my head. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: my dad is actually from Ghana. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. So my dad that is from Ghana, tough. but his mom is from Italy. So mm. so he's mixed, right? Okay. So, so when people when I say my dad's from Ghana, they're like, nah, because he's really light. Yeah. Um, but but he is. So <laughs> but um, so that you know that Ghana. that yeah. African you know vibe yeah. is like you know to not be corny, but it's in my blood. So when no, I heard it it, when I heard yeah. it. That was like the first, the thing, that was like my first encounter with um, Christian Afrobeat. Yeah. And I heard that, man, every song was just like, it just moves you. Yeah. And, you know, secular yeah. Afrobeat, you got to, you know, you got to be yeah. careful with that. But, yeah, but this course. is like free and moving. So I was like, yo, when yeah, I heard that, man, yeah. I was like, dude, this is, this is it right here. It, it, yeah. it inspired me so much. Yeah. I hit, uh, I hit somebody up from Zambia and was like, hey, yeah. can you help me with this? They're so going to be authentic. Yeah. Um. So that's the that's the project I'm working on now. You know, it's subtle Ooh. subtle throw in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, man, God's favorite ba baby by Limo Blaze, one of the, yeah. one of my favorite albums. Man, I got I definitely got to listen to that, and and I love that because it's like you know I have such a a long list of music that I listen to, and it's it's hard to find something new to listen to. You know what I'm saying? So right. anytime someone presents something new to me, I'm like, oh, what is that? I gotta right. go listen to it. You know, and find out what it is. So. That's what's up. I definitely got to go listen to uh, Limo Blaze and definitely listen to that album. Because yeah. if you're telling me you can be stuck on an island and be okay with that album, I definitely got to listen to it. I no can, man. <laughs> That's wild. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, if you could pick one artist to, to do a feature with, your dream artist, like if you did a, a, a song with this artist, that's it. Like, you are on top of the world. What artist would that be? Now, are we thinking business-wise? Are we thinking, like, because I, I like the artist? Ooh, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Oh, you know what? Give me both. Give me both. Okay. Give me both. All right. All right. So, business-wise, in the Christian community, I would say Lecrae. Because he spans he spans the entire demographic, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, business-wise... Right, so business wise, yeah. I would be like, Lecrae needs to hop on this. So yeah. I, it's like a guaranteed boom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm with. But you. but for heart wise, that's mm -hmm. like I'm like I look at them and be like, wow, I like, I I like you. Like we're cool. I think we could vibe together. Yeah. Um, I would either say, one K few, mm. or or Ty Brassel. Ooh, okay, okay, I feel you. I feel you. And. And wh why why do you feel so um, connected to those two particularly? Well, one K few because I know his story. We have a yeah. similar story. Okay. Um, similar testimony. So I think we could chop it up and talk. You know what I'm saying? And get like Word. you know, get real with each other. Yeah. Um, and Ty Brassel, he is just extremely transparent with what he's been through, and yeah. I I love that. I'm a yeah. transparent person. 
Yeah. Um, so him being transparent in his music really inspired me to be transparent in my music. Yeah. Um, so just to chop it up with him and to, you know, talk to him about what he's been through and things like that. I just think, it yeah. again, I think it'd be a good a little, little yeah, session. Good chop, so. Yeah. Y'all make ma y'all probably make some magic for real, for real. Dude. Right. So. That's what's up. I, I mean, you might as well throw in little more blades in there, too. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, it's, 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 it's so cool because, like, you know, when, when, when I went to school, you know, I remember one of my favorite classes was music history. You know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. the history of music, where it started and stuff. And it, I just remember, you know, beats and drums, you know, that started in Africa. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Euro the Europeans, they had no idea what drums were and stuff like that. They were, you know, just playing the piano. But, like, all the eight of weights and all that stuff, all that came from Africa, so right. I feel like it connects to all of us, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. especially you know, having root from there, you know what I'm saying. So, exactly, you know, it's it, it really does connect it to something a lot more soulful, you know. So, yeah, that'll be that'll be dope. I gotta listen to him, man. I, I definitely got to like, you do. Is, is that his first project or oh, no, no, no. So, you know what the truth is, yeah, the truth. Oh, he yeah, has a whole, they have a, they have a whole collab album together. Oh yeah, so word. so he's been in he's been in it for a while. I just word. I just heard of him based on God's favorite baby. Oh, okay. okay, so it's funny because a feature that's on Thought Form Mission Three yeah is on the album that I, like on God's favorite baby. Oh, so God. since okay. she was like, hey, I want this album to listen to it. I was like, I'm gonna listen to it because I support yeah. her. So yeah. I was like, I'm gonna listen to it, and I was like, whoa. When I heard it, I was like, golly, that's what's up. <laughs> I was like, dude, yeah. You know, yeah, so that's yeah, how I heard him. Uh, no, yeah, he then I mean he's certified. I mean, if he with the truth, because the truth that's back in, you know what I'm saying? Like that's I think the truth was out before Lucre. It if I yeah. if I believe so, yeah. The truth, he been in here for a minute, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. That's what's up. So um what I want to touch on the 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 music production thing, right? So when you went to school for music production how deep do they get into it? Because, you know, it's one of those things It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's such a creative thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you have to, it's like it's like doing a painting. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you go to school for to, to learn how to paint? You get know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. cause isn't it supposed to be, like, creative? Aren't you supposed to kind of just do your own thing? Like, what do you actually learn from school when it comes to the production side of music? So uh, that's actually a really good question because I know a lot of people are like, you know, it's artistic. Um, how do you get how do you get graded? Because if you like it, then it's then it's good. Um, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, but they actually they take you through every genre. So I had to produce rock. Mm. I had to produce you know metal. I had to produce. Are you pop. serious? Yeah, yeah. Like this is it was no joke, and this was full state university. So if you oh, ever want, yeah. if anybody oh, yeah. is looking for a degree, full state yeah. university is the, is the way to go because they they push you right. Yeah. So coming from a background of rap and hip hop, yeah, when it came to like actually producing rap and hip hop, it was like this much, yeah, compared to wow. like you know this, right? Wow. Um, so they prepare you to to mix and master. They prepare you yeah. to mix and master, um, like rock, you yeah. know, hip hop, pop, yeah. jazz, you know, classical, wow. um, and they make you produce in these styles too. Yeah. So they don't just teach you this is rap, this is yeah. hip hop. They yeah. teach you this is what makes it rap. This is what oh. makes it jazz. This is what makes it rock. This is, you know, you know what yeah. I'm saying? This is what makes it yeah. rock. Yeah. Um, they teach you history. They teach you why, you know, why it came about, how it yeah. came about. Um, and, like, you study pieces yeah. of work. So, like, they sent me, I don't have it with me right now. Yeah. But they sent me, like, an entire book of just, like, 50s to 70s, you know, pop wow. music. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they, you know, you go through the sheet music. And you yeah. read through it, wow. and they ask you what, like, where are the memorable parts? Um, where, what notes would ring in a listener's ear that yeah. made this music? You know, made this song hit. Yeah. Um, wow. So it's really it's down real classical training. Yeah, they get down to the root of it, man. That yeah. sounds so interesting because, like, you know, like even myself, you know, as a as a producer myself, like, let's say I wanna let's say I wanna do a hip hop kind of EDM mesh, you know. I'll be sitting there for hours. I'm like, it don't sound EDM enough. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I have no idea what to do to get it to, like you said, what makes hip hop hip hop, what makes rock rock. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? And it's one of those things. 
I listen to all genres of music, but when it comes to creating it, for me, it's like the only one that comes natural to me is hip hop. Everything else is just like it's a real challenge, you know what right. I mean? So it's it's just dope that 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 is an aspect like that alone. I would definitely go to full set for just for that alone. Like, what makes these this? You know what right. I'm saying? What instruments make rock rock? What instruments make um, jazz jazz? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That's absolutely incredible. That's amazing. So yeah, that's what's up. I definitely got to go back, man. One day, man. One day. Trust me, we're we're gonna be alumni. One day. <laughs> What I'm with it, man. For sure, for sure. All right, so now let, let, let's get into some more of the um, nitty-gritty stuff. All right, so as an independent artist, you know, I'll ask you, how long have you officially been an independent artist? Okay, so officially I've been an independent artist for about two years now. Okay. Um, A, a year ago I started, I kind of redid my entire process when it comes to writing, producing, um, got new management uh, coming up a year ago in October. Word. Um, so, so independent for yeah. two years, but managed uh, well. Managed very well. I love my manager. Shout yeah. out to him. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, uh, managed well for a year now. Word. Okay. And oh, I definitely got access. So, so, you know, a lot of independent artists, you know, tend to not tend to try to do everything themselves, and you know, not want to have a manager or anything like that i don't know maybe it's just a connection between management and record labels they mm -hmm. kind of you know just are turned off by it speak to the benefits because i understand the benefits of a manager mm -hmm. but speak to the the true benefits of having a manager that some independent artists may not even realize okay so personally why why did nobody ghy want a manager um yeah. We're going to answer that question first. And I think okay. the reason I wanted a manager was because, one, I didn't, I was taught music business, but I wasn't in it. And when it comes to this industry, mm. you got to already be in it to go somewhere. Absolutely. So Ooh. I was like, I'm not going to. Yeah. You got to say that again. You got to say that again. <laughs> if you, you got to make it in this industry, you got to yeah. already be in it to go yeah. somewhere. I love it. Yeah. So, so and, and you don't have to be, but a quicker way to get through the industry is to already yeah. be in it. Yes. Um, because you can definitely make a name for yourself. Um, but if you're not spending, you know, thousands of dollars or have the money to spend a thousand dollars, you might yeah. want to get somebody who's in it. Right. Yeah. Um, and my manager, his name is Jay. Um, yeah. he was already in it. Um, yeah. you know, we chopped it up, we talked and I trusted him. Yeah. That's number two. You gotta have, find somebody you trust. You trust. Absolutely. Um, you know, someone who's gonna, who's not going to take a ton of money from you. He doesn't take yeah. money from me. My streams are my streams. My yeah. music is my music. That's what's up. Um, and, you know, like I said, I trusted him and I knew he was going to do the best for me. Yeah. Well, um, now, at first, I didn't really want a manager because I was like, I can handle everything on my own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how uh, people are, yeah. But, you know, the Lord was like, you know, you got, you're going to have too many things going on in the future. You got to have someone who's, you know, there for you and is like, hey, this day you got this. Yeah. You know, this day you got this. Or, yeah. hey, we got to get you, um, you know, a concert. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got to get you a absolutely. concert to start off. Because yeah. nobody knows who you are. And he tells yeah. the truth. He's yeah. like, dude, you know, you only have a thousand followers. Nobody really knows who you are. And he doesn't yeah. say that as in, like, you suck. He's no, saying yeah. that as in, it's, like, it's you know, we're we just starting out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So so he knows how to build from the ground up. And I love yeah. that about him. And he's just, he's phenomenal. When I can't yeah. I can't speak on him positively enough. Yeah. Um, he's phenomenal. He's a man of God. Uh, that's yeah. also another thing that I was, like, oh, I was key really on. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, he has, um, he's integrous, very integrous. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, if I was going to say my piece of advice for any, you know, um, artist yeah. that wanted to start or was like, you know, do I need a manager? Yeah. I would say if you find somebody you trust, um, yeah. and you think of them as like family, yeah, make them your manager because they can help you out. Yeah. That's what's up. And, and it's so, it's so important because I mean, you think pastors in church, you know, they have counsel, they have advisory teams. You know what I'm saying? coaches in football they got assistant coaches and and general managers and things like that it's like there's never really one avenue that you look at that you're just doing it everything solo dolo you get what right. i'm saying like it always it will always take a team even if it's just a team of two it's still it's still a team of two and even like in the scriptures when two or more gather it's never when one person gathers exactly you know what I'm saying? So, like, I definitely feel that. And you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that 
you know, I feel that it's like I'm iffy because I, I'm one of those people like I always thought that I could do everything myself, but I mm. definitely have gotten to a point when I'm like, okay, if I can't get a manager, I need to allocate some things to other people. You get right. what I'm saying? Because you just can't do everything. You know right. what I'm saying? It's just you and, and if you try to do everything, you're never gonna be perfect at anything because you're trying to split your talents in so many different places. You know mm. what I'm saying? So that's what's up. Oh, so someone said uh or had what's was Hag War Worldwide, I think. It was, yeah, so Hagwood Worldwide. Okay. I know, and that's one of my boys. He said okay. the business side needs to be equal attention as the music. And I, I yeah. agree with that fully. Yeah, I do, too. I do, yeah. too. That's absolutely true. And, and I, I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, now that you say that, you have to allocate to other people. I actually uh, used to mix and master my own stuff. Yeah. Um, but my ear, my ear is different than other people's ear. Yes. So... So um, thank you for correcting that for me. Yeah. So um <laughs> yeah. So I actually I have I have a mixing I have a mixing engineer mm -hmm. um and I master myself. I'm pretty good yeah. at mastering. So yeah. That that was also taught from full a full sale. Yeah. Two um people. But, one for mixing, one for mastering. Right. So yeah. so you know, and having that team has, you know, elevated my music to a whole nother level. Yeah. Um, you know, having other people be like, yo, who mastered this? Who mixed this? And that, yeah. like, that's, that's complimentative. That's like, oh, you're complimenting yeah. my team. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, For sure. So my mixing engineer, shout out him, Connor Olstrom. He's from Minnesota. Yeah. Just give him yeah. a little plug. Uh, yeah. If you, you know, want to hit him up, anybody who watches this, want to hit him up, go yeah. hit up Connor Olstrom. He's amazing. For sure. That's what's up. And, and, um, oh, I definitely want to ask you as far as, so you, you send off your mixes, you, you send off your music to get mixed, you master it yourself, and you say you learned that from Full Cell. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's the whole, because, you know, they say everyone's ears are different. You know what I'm saying? So the person who mixes shouldn't be the person mastering and things like that. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and I'm assuming that's why you do those things, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Word. So when it, he's a mixing engineer, but I also ask for his opinion. Like yeah. while he's mixing it, I'm like, hey, does this sound right? Or, yeah. you know, hey, is this this good? But also yeah. for me personally, because you're not going to know how your song sounds really until yeah. it's mixed. So Word. so I send it off to get mixed. I'll bring take it back. I'll listen yeah. to something and I'll be like, oh, that kick isn't it. Or that snare is yeah. not it. Yeah. Um, so like he's mixed things like a year ago that hasn't come out because I just don't like the kick. Yeah, you know what I have to say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, and he's honest. He's like, yeah. yo, like, uh, I like it. I wouldn't listen to it. Or hey, this is it. Like I like this one a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's what's up. Yeah, you need that. You need you need that honesty. You know, mm -hmm. and that that true teamwork. You know, the the true um, opinions from your your team. So that's what's up. So um, when so let me ask you this. All right. So what do your journey so far as an independent artist? Right. Mm -hmm. What would you say would be the hardest part about being an independent art and more specific of uh, being an independent artist and more specifically being a christian independent artist you get what i'm saying because as a christian independent artist we got some different battles that mm -hmm. secular artists don't have to deal with you know right. what I'm especially when it comes to image and who we are as a person and things like that you know so so what would be the hardest part about it for you um for me uh, the hardest part about it is not doing something with it every day. Mm -hmm. um, so so I okay. found it for me, my process, I fast from writing, I fast from producing, um, Word. and I fast from, from even Christian hip-hop. I just fast yeah. from that, that side, and I only listen wow. to worship music. Yeah. Um, so I would say the hardest part for me is just, like, stopping, mm -hmm. sitting down and just, like, praying and fasting and, like, you know, talking to God personally. Yeah, um, because you all as an independent artist, you're like, yo, I always got to be moving, moving, moving. If I'm not yeah. doing with music, then I'm yeah. failing, and that's not necessarily the case. And I had yeah. to get that into my mind. Yeah. Um, but what I think all together from what I've seen in the genre of Christian hip hop, so CHH, mm -hmm. uh, is that everyone thinks that somebody, or not everyone, because I'm not gonna say that, but yeah. people in the genre think that you owe them something. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have these new mm -hmm. artists coming in, they're like. Yo, why is no one listening to my music? Why is no one supporting me? We're all Christians. Yeah. But, but you also got to understand, this is a business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you yeah. can't create relationships by being like, yo, listen to this. Yo, listen yeah. to this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, at some point, you got to create 
fundamental relationships with with these Christians. Absolutely. Um, and if you don't, then like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And 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 there's a level of striving for excellence. You get what I'm saying? It's like it's like when people pick one church over another church. It's like why would you leave my church and go to another church? We're talking about God here. You know what I'm saying? It's a level of excellence. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's like yo. They praise God like they mean it. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you're not willing to put forth that, yo, I'm doing it for God, so I need to give it my all, then people are going to read that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I definitely feel where you're coming from with that. You know, that's that's such a true statement, especially when it comes to Christian artists, for mm -hmm. real, for real. So, so yeah, I think... I think uh, and it doesn't really answer, I mean, answer your question, but yeah, it that also brings up the question of what I would change in the, yeah. in the, the, Ooh, the Christian, yeah. uh, you know, That's the uh, industry. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see support. I love to support no matter where you are in your journey. Um, yeah. You can't judge people's music because it's praise. Yeah. Um, but it's also a business. So your praise has, if you want your praise to be heard, it has to kind of be good. Yeah. Um, That's like the nature of the beast, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but ultimately, it's praise. So yeah. you have to encourage, you know, whoever it is, um, and you yeah. have to continue to push them to excellence as well. Because yeah. what you don't want to do is just be like, "That sucks." Push them to the side. That's yeah. not. That's not what we do as Christians, that's not right? What we do. Yeah, that's true. So if it if it's not if it's not catered to you, and if you yeah. don't like it, um, yeah. then you say, "Hey, you know, maybe try this," or "Hey, yeah. that's not my style, but I'll support you anyway." That's big. Um, and I think I think that's that's all we need is just you know Christian love, but absolutely but that that'll happen that'll happen when it happens. Yeah, at, at some point, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Uh, my boy Pierre Fitness says you have to you have to put in the work still, work by the sweat of your brow. That's true. That's yeah. in the scripture. It's literally said, work by the sweat of your brow. You know, put in the work. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you're doing it for God, you don't want to be in there and be like, yeah, I gave God about fifty percent effort. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It got to be like Deadpool, maximum effort, you know what I'm right. saying? Like full maximum, and, and I definitely feel that, you know. And when it comes to the CHH community, you know, I, I just love it. I love it in general because it's it like it gives you an avenue to, you know, still be in the realm in, in God's house, but still, you know, praise and dance, you know, and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. So that's dope. But one thing I wanted to ask you, which, which I find really interesting is, is, you fast you say you fast from writing you fast from recording and things like that you know that's so interesting to me because you know it's 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 essentially your livelihood right mm -hmm. it's essentially your business you know what i'm saying usually when people fast people fast you know for like maybe food or or things that they enjoy they fast. you're actually fasting from things that are potentially bringing you in income mm -hmm. right so what's the thought process behind that? Like, what? why do you do that? So my pro, my, well, really the thought behind it is, it's God's ultimately. Mm. So, I love so it. it may be bringing me income, but that's still God's. Um, yeah. It may be, wow. may be flexing my brain a little bit. It's still, yeah. it's, that's a God-given gift, right? Yeah. I wouldn't be anywhere when it comes to music without God. So, wow. so I give it back to him. Hey, you yeah. take this for a while and I'll yeah. focus on you for a while. And, you know, um, so good. yeah. And I think and at one point in my career, I heard God say, stop writing music. You're done. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. And I gave it up. I was yeah. like, all right. It was kind of like a, um, like a just stop. Right. Yeah. So I just stopped. Yeah. Um, wow. And, you know, at one point he came back, he was like, all right, I pr thank you for sacrificing what you love. Thank you for sacrificing yeah. what I gave to you. Wow. Here's it back. And here's it back in tenfold. Wow, right? so powerful, bro. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. and it it blows my mind because, you know, I wasn't ready to give it up um, yeah. 100% because I was like, yo, I just started. I've only been in yeah. this like a year. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you telling me to give it up? But I heard, yeah. um, and like I said, he gave it back, and he gave it back yeah. in tenfold. And I just, I want to, you know, personally in front of everybody, thank God that he gave it back because Absolutely. I don't know where I would be, you know, without it. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'd be in a good place because, you know, I got him. But yeah. but, yeah, so that's why I fast from it. It's Absolutely. not really about the income for me. Yeah. Um, it's really about the praise and about being transparent with what I've been through. Yeah. Um, so I give it back to him 100% yeah. uh, whenever he tells me to. So Absolutely. And, and man, I commend you for that, to, for having the trust in him to, you know, even do that. You get what I'm saying? Like, for me, 
I think that would be a very, very difficult battle. Like, yo, stop running your business. Yo, that's that's got to be the enemy. Like, <laughs> why would God <laughs> tell me to do that? That don't even make any sense. I would be in the Bible looking at, is there anybody who ever stopped? Like, did Moses take a break? Like, hold on, nah, that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, God will tell you to do that. Like, like he did for Jesus. You know, Jesus went off. You know, in the middle of ministry, what he he went off for, um, well, forty days, forty nights. Yeah. Sometimes that he would leave the disciples and just go off and pray on his own. You get what I'm saying? That's essentially leaving his job behind. Like, right. The disciples are out there trying to cast out demons by themselves, and they're like, "Yo, Jesus, where you at? Where you at? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel that. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you know, I pray that God gives me the calling to do that one day too. That. That's that's absolutely incredible. Oh, um, somebody just asked, um, y'all do management. No, I don't do management yeah, myself, um, but he definitely know, nobody definitely knows somebody who does do management. I don't know if you guys will be you'll be a perfect fit or whatever, but holla at him if you're looking for management. Yeah, all you right? can talk to me <laughs> for sure. All right, so let me ask you this. All right, and this is this is like. A deep question and of course you know we never want to live in regret and everything like that you know god always has a plan and a path for us mm -hmm. but i like to ask the question anyway just just to kind of just see if anybody can relate to it right mm -hmm. so if if there was anything that you could tell if there was one piece of advice that you could give your younger self what would that advice be who um I would say that living for the world and living for people isn't really worth it. Um, cause, you know, like, running the, not, <laughs> like not really uh, running the streets, but like, you know, living for other people, um, living for the, the approval of other people is not worth it at all. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Cause when you're down, they're not going to be there. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people say that, you know, a lot of people so say true. that, but when, when you're there, yeah. that's when you start to realize that. Yeah. Um. And that. And at that point, it's too late. So. Yeah. So I would look at myself and be like, Yo, when you're down bad, none of these people are gonna be around you. Yeah. Uh. None. None of them are gonna be there for you. So yeah. their approval means nothing. Um. Yeah. So I think that's what I would go back and tell myself. Wow. That's that's so powerful and and it's so true, especially in this day and age, with social media and everything. It's like that need for approval is almost amplified. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like it's it's on a whole nother level. Like you literally have people sitting there saying at their phone, why don't I have enough likes? You go mm -hmm. on this photo and it's like, wow. But the the what you said is so key because no matter how much likes you have, no matter how much comments you have, no matter how much followers you have, when you're going through certain things, those people aren't going to be there. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just will not be. You know what I'm saying? So, But the one person you know who will always be there is God. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So if there's anybody to seek approval from, is from him. You get what I'm saying? So right. I definitely, I definitely feel feel that. And, you know, I've definitely fallen victim to that plenty of times before. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But that's absolutely real, you know, and I, I love, I love that answer. So um, now I want to ask you definitely, you know, about your music, of course, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like, you know, again, uh, you know, interest of full disclosure, I listened to his most recent project all the way here again and it's absolutely amazing and just i just want you to just you know kind of just talk about your project you know uh, I, I know you say you're working on some afro mm -hmm. some afro pieces stuff <laughs> yeah. like that you know what i'm saying but you literally just dropped this project you get what i'm saying so mm -hmm. i want to kind of focus a little bit more on that because it's a great project it's a powerful project you have a strong message behind it and you know just just talk a little bit about the project yeah so the project you're referring to is star for mission three yeah um it is the it is the third of a trilogy thought for mission yes. one two and three um yeah. but thought for mission three is is special because it's talking about uh sexual immorality and my uh, journey through sexual immorality that's big. that's big um so you have uh five songs on there there's six but the sixth one is just me saying that sexual immorality yeah you know we may not agree, we don't like it but yeah. people go through it i pray for yeah. you and then we you know that's the end yeah. of the uh the project yeah but um like I said, it just goes through the progression of, you know, being by myself, yeah. um, acting on the sin and temptation, 
yeah. being, being split between what God wants for me and what I want for myself. Yeah. Um, being lost in that split and then yeah. coming back to Christ and coming back to yeah. my, you know, my family being like, Hey, I got this problem. You yeah. Know, we gotta, we gotta talk about it. I gotta get through it. Yeah. Um, Amen. and you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of, of, of praise behind it. Yeah. Um, but the ones that really, you know, touch my heart are the ones that like, yo, I've dealt with this too. Yeah. Um, and what you wrote was spot on. Yeah. Um, and like we, like we said before, we, before we talked, um, yeah. I told you that that wasn't even supposed to be the project, you know, yeah, Thought yeah, Mission 3 yeah, was yeah. kind of in the back of my head. It wasn't yeah. supposed to be about sexual morality. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be on a, those couple of those songs were supposed to be on a whole different album. Yeah. Um, but the God, God stopped me and was like, yo, you have two songs on here that, that I want to be a part of Thought for Mission 3. And I'm like, Three. like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, you know, Hey, Thought for Mission 3 is going to be about sexual morality. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, like, <laughs> yeah. pause, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't want to yeah. be known as the, the, you know, the artist who, like, talks about sexual, yeah. like, talks about these outrageous things that yeah. did. Yeah. Um, I prayed and I fasted, and it was like, all right, let's, uh, let's get down to it. So Nights Alone, Sin Temptation, and Split came along. And, yeah. uh, you know, when they all came together, I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is something. Um, yeah. um, and before I released it, I prayed over it and was like, hey, if this, I hope this touches lives, uh, yeah. this, that, and the other. Um, and I released it in it. And from what I've gotten back, yeah. a lot of people have liked it. And it's been yeah. um, a real touching touching project. So yeah, so I absolutely. thank God for that, you know, completely, 100%. That's, it's not, it's me doing the music, but, you know, yeah. it's God speaking to other people. And I, I just Amen. appreciate him for doing that. No, yeah, absolutely, and man, like, like I told you before, you know, it touched me, and and there's not, there's, like, I listen to a lot of music, you know what I'm saying, and I listen, I listen to Christian music, I listen to secular music, I, I just listen to a lot of music in general, you know what I'm saying, and there's only certain music that really touches me, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and it's usually the ones that, that are the most transparent, the ones that are the most real, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying, Especially when you're dealing with things that that everybody goes through, you get what I'm saying. And it's like like sexual immorality is one of those things. It's like it's like a hush hush thing in the in the in the Christian community, right? For the most part, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like everybody knows it exists. You get what I'm saying. But it's like yeah, we kind of don't talk about that. Like it's Sesame Street or something. You get what right. I'm saying. And it's like yo, no, like yo, I'm a 20 year old Christian. I'm a 30 year old Christian. I'm a Christian in high school. Like, yo, there's women everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. like I need to know what to do. You get what right. I'm saying? Yeah. If we don't talk about it, if we don't talk about those battles, those struggles, how as us as Christians are going to be able to tell our younger Christians, this is this is what to do. This is mm -hmm. how to do it. You get what I'm saying? This is what God says about it and things like that. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I just love the transparency in it and the realness of that project. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Glory to God. I appreciate that 100. Um, percent And you're right. I think people our age are being lost to this. I mean, because you have you have like you can have sex on your phone just going through Instagram. Boom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, For real. Uh, you know, watching TV. Boom. Yeah. There it is. Um, it's everywhere. You know, it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's a product of the world. You can't get yeah. mad at it because that's that's the world does what the world does. Uh, we all know that. Yeah. Um, but as men and, and women, women go through yeah. it too. Um, as Christians, uh, we got to brace up, you know what I mean? And yeah. we have to be transparent about it. Because if we're not, then people aren't going to know what to do, like you said. And if yeah. they don't know what to do, we lose more souls like lose. that. Ooh, yes, exactly, bro. Like, this is so true, so true. And I love that. And uh, for, I think for Care Fitness is co I love it. Our struggles should be learned and fought within the church to avoid mm -hmm. the world views on it. That's right. so true. That's that's exactly what we're saying here. You know, if we don't speak on it, then we're letting the world speak on it for us. You yep. know what I'm saying? And it's just like that's the last people that we want to speak on it, especially right. when it comes to being a young man in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. they, I mean it's it's glorified, you get what I'm saying? It's glorified and and even infidelity is glorified. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And all of those different things. So it's it's one of those things. It's a real battle. It's a real challenge that I think every Christian man faces. And if a Christian man doesn't speak on it or says that he doesn't face it, he lying. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's right. <laughs> because 
we were naturally designed to have those temptations. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? God, right after God created Adam, he was like, wait a minute. I can't leave you alone. I got to make Eve right. because I know you might die, go crazy if I don't make you this partner. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I definitely feel that, bro. And and I love the concept of the project. I love the sound of the project. I mean, everything about the project, I absolutely love. You get what I'm Ooh, saying? Thank and, you. And, and, and it's so crazy because for me, like, you know, generally speaking, I'm like hip hop, hip hop. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I barely listen to R and B. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, uh, you know, I have maybe like one Ty Dollar Sign or like I don't really listen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not. That's not really my lane. I'm really the more hardcore hip hop, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, when it's real, like your music, you get what I'm saying? Or when it's real, like let's say Tupac's changes, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? It resonates a certain way. You get what I'm saying? And it's, yeah. it's, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So let me ask you, well, another one of your songs that came up uh, after the project, after I listened to the project, was Graduation. Mm -hmm. How young were you for that song? Like, where was that? What was that? <laughs> so that was, uh, that was about a, a year ago. Okay. A year ago? Okay. About. So, okay. so, yeah, that wasn't... That was, um, the beat was produced by my boy, Misfit K. He's my younger god brother. Word. Um, he, he wrote the hook for that. Word. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean, I like, I like graduation. It was just yeah, kind of I a fun it. little quip. It, it, it um, is. We, uh, we kind of push it every year, you know, during graduation time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's kind of. That's kinda, smart. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it's a, it yeah. wasn't, at first it wasn't business. It was kind of like, yo, what, what should we call it? How do you yeah. level up during life? Graduate, you graduate during life, so yeah. we are all right. And yeah. then calling it graduation was kind of like, you know, we could push this every graduation like yeah. time of year. So we were like, yeah. all right, cool. So yeah. it, it became it became a business, little bit of business in there. But yeah, but yeah, graduation, I like it. I mean, that's yeah. like that was like hip hop and rap. Um, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I feel that, and and you know, uh, and, and another though, man, man, you've been putting in work, man. Like when you really think, like I'm looking at the discography, I'm like. Wait a minute, two years into the game, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you put it in work, man. Don't let nobody tell you you're being lazy, bro. Thank you. you. It work, man. I'm over here still working on my first project. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this project for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you already are remission three, bro. That's mm -hmm. that's that's absolutely incredible, bro. But that's what's up. And of course, you know, I want you to just, you know. Kind of just tell people where to find you. You know what I'm saying? Where to find your music? Where to find you? You know, on social media and things like that. Yeah. So you can find me anywhere on social media. So Twitter, uh, TikTok, uh, um, Instagram, and yeah. Facebook at nobody G H Y. Okay. Um, nobody G. And what does the G H Y stand for again? No, gonna hurt you. Nobody's gonna, gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> so so you can find yeah. me anywhere at nobody G H Y. Yeah. Um. And I mean, yeah, you can find my music again, nobody GHY on Apple Music, iTunes, yeah. uh, Tidal, yeah. um, you know, Amazon Music, Spotify, anywhere there's music really, anywhere, yeah. any yeah. streaming service, that's where I am, uh, Pandora. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you're more than welcome to go, go check it out. Um, yeah. And I, I love uh, that, uh, you know, I love feedback. So if you yeah. want to listen to it, uh, give me some feedback. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. more than open to it. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm also I love talking to people who listen to my music. I love talking yeah. to fans and uh, people also in the in the section. So yeah, feel free to DM me. Um, I'll yeah. do my best to, to reply. Uh, that's part of the transparency. You know what I mean? Being yeah, open. Yeah, absolutely. So so yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and listen, if there's any negative reviews, bro, send it my way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because hey, listen, <laughs> listen, I may be Christian and I may be going to heaven. But I'm from the south side of heaven. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I get down. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hear I you. Christian, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? I'll pick up a spear. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, oh Lil Bell say, said, whoa. He said, what's up? And um, my boy said, I got 84 tracks. I'm not going to lie. I do have a lot of tracks. And that's the hard <laughs> part. It's picking, it's picking what tracks to make the project. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know, as a producer, you probably make a bunch of tracks and you're like, ooh, which one's, which one's going to fit, which one's not. You get right. what I'm saying? But, man, as far as uh, I absolutely love what you're doing, bro. 
love all the music, you know what I'm saying? And I, I for it, could definitely say that I am a fan. All right, now. Thank you. Oh, for sure. Now, we're, we're coming to a close. All right, so I definitely want to let everybody know, all right, if you've ever thought about making music, all right, you know, or ever thought about maybe pursuing a career in music, being an independent artist, or if you're maybe already making music and you just haven't become official yet, you haven't actually started a music business, after this video, go ahead and go to my website and pick up my free music business checklist, all right? It's a free checklist. It just gives you three simple things that you can do to literally start your own music business. You can ask nobody. It's not difficult, all right? You know, people make it sound like it's the most complex thing <laughs> in the world. You got to get signed to Aftermath Records to actually <laughs> get your music on Spotify. It's not like that, bro. It literally takes like five minutes to get your music on Spotify. It's not that difficult, all right? <laughs> so go ahead and um, check out that music business checklist, all right? If you want a more step-by-step -step guide on how to actually do a step-by-step, -step, you could also pick up my ebook as well. Uh, 13 Steps to Jumpstart Your Music Business. And also, please, please, I beg of you, go listen to Thoughtful Remissions 3. You know what? Uh, maybe, maybe start from one and go all the way to three. <laughs> Whichever you do, just make sure you listen to three. It's absolutely powerful. It's absolutely beautiful. And like you said in the, in the, um, the last track, the letter, um, it leaves you with hope. You know what I'm saying? It truly, truly leaves you with hope. It, it, it makes, it, it leaves you feeling that, you know what? God got me at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a beautiful thing. And I just, I love the project, man. And I can't wait to see what else you got. And, and we definitely got to collaborate on like a bunch of stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm with it, man. I like, love working. Yeah, man, I'm about to send you all different types of stuff, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so get ready for that, for sure, for sure. And is there anything else that you wanted to let everybody know before we go? Um, just a huge shout out to whoever watched this. Renika, that's my that's my sister-in-law. Renika, oh. thank you for watching. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Lil Val, he goes to my church. So thank you for watching, Junior. That's um, well. And uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate you guys, my fans, whoever watched, um, and the ones who are going to watch. Uh, yeah. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I do this for God, and I do this for you. Amen. Um, so just just uh, thank you for whoever watched this, and you'll be hearing more from me soon. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, thank you, bro. Like it, it was it was an honor. You know, I'm glad I got you in now before you get all famous and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got you in now. I can say I was one of the first persons to interview him, so yes, I really know him. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but whichever the case, bro, it's absolute blessing, bro. You know, uh, like I said, I love what you're doing for God. I love what you're doing for the kingdom. love what you're doing for the CHH community. I love your diversity and just everything about your music, bro. And I really hope everyone who's watching can go check out your music because, like I said, it's absolutely phenomenal. If I love it as a pure hip-hop guy, you're going to love it, too. You get what I'm saying? So that's what's up. And that's our show, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining in on The Speakers Don't Lie. Again, nobody, G-H-Y. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for being a great, a great special guest. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.